Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. This is your girl, Jet. I'm coming to you today with our Bible dive um, with Jet. And I am going to be continuing with the reading of Revelation. Chapter 11 is where we are today. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some good nuggets out of that for the day. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will truly guide us in this reading today. The Lord has promised us a blessing if we would read the book of Revelation if we listen to the book of Revelation being read and if we adhere, if we keep that which we hear or read in this book. So, Father, we ask, ask you today as we're about to read, Lord, that we will truly be able to hear attentively today, Lord. Mighty God, that you will speak to us today, Lord, from this word and that we will come up under that blessing of those who read and hear and keep that which is written in this book. Father, we are anticipating the day when you will come again to redeem us, O oh God, to take the church out, Lord God. And we know, God, for some it will be a terrible experience for those who have rejected you, Jesus. But Father God, while we still have time, we pray that as we minister this word today, as we read this word today, somebody, mighty God, will hear this word and will turn from their sins and will turn to you, Lord Jesus. For God, we pray that, you know, as you have made that way of escape for us, that they will not just let it slide. Father God, even like John was given this prophecy, this word in his belly, it was bitter because he had to tell somebody. He needed to prophesy this to the world. And Father, as we read it, Lord, we pray that even that same anointing will come upon us, the believers, Lord, will come upon us to tell somebody else about you, Jesus, to tell somebody of the end time, to tell somebody that you are coming back and that you have made a way for them to escape. Lord God, I pray that we will just not sit upon this, Lord, but God, we will run with this message, O oh God, and that people will hear and they will repent and they will come to you before it's too late. Before, as the angel swore, that their time shall be no more. Before there is no, before there is no more delay. Mighty God, right now we know that by your grace and your mercy, you are giving us time. You are giving us time, Lord, to repent. You are giving us time to turn. You are giving us time to come to you. But you said that there is going to come the days, Lord, when you will shorten the days for the very elect's sake. Because unless you shorten the days, then even the very elect will not be saved. So, Father, we are asking you to help us to make full use of this time that we have. To spread this gospel. My God, to make changes in our lives, to repent, to turn to you, Lord. And Father, I pray, Jesus, that we will do so, each and every person, before their time will be no more. We thank you for today and the opportunity that we have today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I bless the Lord. I really thank God today for this word that we're about to read here. We did Revelation up until Revelation chapter 10, which is where we got to yesterday. Today we're going to be going through chapter 11. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do just chapter 11 today and then we'll continue, you know, as such. So again, I've prayed and I just pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will reveal to us what it is that he's doing. Like um, yesterday we talked about John and John saw that angel that was standing one foot upon the sea, one foot upon the land and that he had a small book in his hand and he was told to take the book and to eat the book and it will be sweet in his mouth bitter in his belly which when he did it became sweet in his mouth it was bitter in the belly sweet in his mouth and it's it, he was told that it's because he will have to prophesy to many peoples and nations and tongues and kings and this book of revelation speaks to everyone regardless of your status in life it is for you it's for each and every one of us the prophecy of this book is for every single person 
no matter what your status in life is, no matter how high or how low, as the Bible says, small or great. And so chapter 11 says, and there was given me a reed. So John is continuing with his vision after having eaten that book, which, as I said, yesterday I talked about Jesus Christ as that living word. And that when we taste of him, we see the word of God tells us taste and see that the Lord is good. So when you taste of him, you will know that he is good. He is merciful. He's kind. He's gracious. Amen. He is, uh, he, 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 he is uh, your liberator. Amen. And so you need to taste and see today. And then that word also gets down in the spirit of a man and calls you to want to tell somebody else about Jesus, mighty God. And so John, after having eaten this book, he went on to say, I, and there was given to me a reed like unto a rod. And he, he says that the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. So he was given a read and he was told to measure the temple of God and to measure the altar and to measure them that worship within the temple. But the outer court, the court which is without the temple, it says, leave that one out. Don't measure that. Because you see, God is making a distinction between his people and those who do not know him or do not follow him. He says, leave that outer one for it is given unto the Gentiles, those that are on the outs outside, those that are not um, they are not, they have not yet become the family of God. They are not yet become spiritual Jews. Let's put it that way. So he says, measure the temple, measure the altar and measure the people, those that worship within. Do you know that God is coming back a people or people that is worshiping within that is in the body of Christ. You see those people who feel they can reject Jesus and still make heaven. They have not yet read the scriptures because everywhere you read, you understand that there is no other way to God, but through Jesus. And so when he says measure, measure the altar, measure the temple and measure the, those people who worship with him, there is a distinction between those that are within and those that are without. You don't want to be found those that are without. You want to be within. That's why the Bible says that when you die, the dead in Christ shall rise. Because if you, you shall rise first, they that are alive and remain, what? In Christ. They're the ones that's going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So we need to endeavor to get within. Amen? Bless the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost already. But the cord which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under feet, underfoot. So the Gentiles that are not within, they are not a part of the body of Christ. They have not accepted Jesus Christ. They are still rejecting. It says they are going to trample down and tread underfoot the holy city for about a period of 42 months. 40, 40 and two months is something like three and a half years, right? And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And the two witnesses that he's talking about is the two witnesses is Moses and uh, Moses and Elijah. Now, why are they the two witnesses? Because God gave us the law. The law is represented by Moses. He is the one of the witness of the two witnesses that God has. That he says that I will give power unto my two witnesses. He, the law, Moses, the Bible says the law was given by Moses, right? So the law represent, is represented by Moses. And the law is a witness, mighty God, against us. Because the law was given as a schoolmaster to point us to Christ. Nobody can say, I have never heard of Jesus, because even in reading the Torah, even in reading the law, you are being pointed to Jesus. You understand? So it is a witness against you. Nobody will have an excuse on the day of judgment to say, I have never heard anybody mention him to me. 
The law is going to be a witness against you. So Moses is one of the two witnesses. And also Elijah, because Elijah represents the prophets. And the prophets was given to us to prophesy and to tell us about Jesus and to point us even further to him and to tell us about what he's done for us and what he will do for us and that we need to repent and we need even John. In this revelation, after having eaten that book, was been endowed with the power and the spirit of prophecy to go and prophesy. We are reading the prophecy of John. The prophecy is going to prophesy against us. It's going to be a witness that yes, indeed, they knew of Jesus. They knew that he died upon the cross for their sins. They knew that they needed to repent and to return to him, but yet they chose to live in their sins. And therefore, we will have no excuse before God. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. So about a hundred, one thousand two hundred and sixty days, they are going, these two prophets, God says, I'm going to send them back in the earth. They are going to walk around and they are going to prophesy. They're going to preach the gospel. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell somebody today, like all the other ministers of the gospel who's trying to tell people about Jesus, but they are going to come for a period of 1,260 days to prophesy. They're going to be doing it clothed in sackcloth, meaning that it's through lamentation. They're going to be pleading with people, lamenting and pleading with people. Come, turn to Jesus, refuse, reject your lifestyle of sin, repent. He says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. The two olive trees and the candlesticks standing before the God of the earth, mighty God of Daniel. And if any man will hurt them, it says their fire proceeds out, proceeds out of their mouths. So those men, when they will be sent back on the earth to prophesy, there are people that will still try to hurt them, to try to kill them because people are always trying to kill the believers. They don't want us to prophesy the word of truth. Because, I mean, they don't want to be told that they're sinning and that their lifestyle is filthy and that their judgment is coming if they don't repent. So they will want to kill them. And the Bible says that they are going to try to kill them. But he says they're going to be how they will have so much power that from their mouth, they will be able to proceed fire out of their mouth and will devour their enemies. For 1,260 days, they are going to be able to overcome the attacks and the onslaughts of those who do not want to hear the word of truth. And if any man will hurt them, then he must in this manner be killed. So when they come up and them try to hurt them, they automatically they will be killed by the fire that will come out of their mouths. And so these have power in it says that they will have power. These have power to shut heaven, right? So that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Meaning that there will be no hindrance to them being able to go out there and speak that word. They will be able to even shut heaven if, it's, if, they, if, they, if the news weather that they announce that it's going to be a very rainy day. They will be able to shut the heaven so that it does not rain because the word of the Lord must be preached. That word of God will be the, the rain that the people will need more than anything else. And that word of God will be preached. So they have power to shut heaven that it rain not on in the days of their prophecy. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. In, the, in essence, that they will be given this power by God to be able to do all these signs and these wonders as a means of convincing people. You don't believe what I'm saying? When Jesus walked the earth, Jesus used his own signs and, in order to convince. Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. He told them about himself. And he did all these signs and wonders. They followed him because he could multiply a few fish and a few bread and feed thousands. So they were following him for these signs and for the fish and the bread. But he being the living bread, they were not accepting as much as they should. Many were rejecting the true bread of life while they followed him for the natural bread and the natural fish. 
But these men, the Bible says they will be given this power to be able to shut up heaven so it does not rain. And then so that people will, will look to God and pray and ask God. They will, they will have this power to, 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 to turn water into blood. Again, it's almost like in the days of, of, of Egypt when, when God was trying to release his people from bondage. And so he will do all these signs just to convince somebody. Mighty God, that I am indeed God. I am indeed the one. You need to come. You need to turn to me. Mighty God. Well, look at the mercy of God. Does God really need to, to try to do everything in order to convince us? But he's doing it out of mercy because he knows that men, in the, they're always looking for a sign. You tell them the truth and they say, show me a sign. I need to see it. So God says, I'm going to send you men that will have power over these elements and they will be able to show you these signs so that you will, you, you should accept this truth. And when... Mighty God, let me read. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues. Mighty God, you may say, why would God want to plague, put plague upon the earth? As I said, it's his mercy. He's trying to convince people. I am indeed God and you need to turn to me. So these signs is to motivate and to push people to run to God, to cause them to be desperate enough to want to seek him. How loving and how generous is our God where he could have, Jesus said, listen to Jesus. Jesus said when he was going to be crucified upon Calvary's cross, he said, don't you know, I could just call 10,000 of angels. I could have called 10,000s of angels who would come to my rescue just like that. Yet he did not do it. He went to the cross and he died for you and I. Now God is saying, I will do all these things. I will even send plagues upon you just to get you to turn to me. Because I want to save you. It's like, it's like the Bible says that a father that loves his children will chastise them. You understand, you chastise them. It's love to correct them, to lead them in the right path. And so that's the love of God at action, trying to chastise, trying to, to, to lead the people to him. Whatever it takes to push you and to get you to turn from that evil way. And yet people will not accept him. And he says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, when that 1,260 days should finish... And they will finish their testimony, finish telling you everything that they need to tell you about God, doing every sign, trying everything. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. And I'm so glad that it's only after they've finished doing what they were sent to do. Because you see, one thing with God is that the word of God can never return to him void. He must accomplish the things to which it is sent. And so they will come and they will do their assignment before that dragon from the bottomless pit will decide to make war against them. And so now after they have finished their course, there is going to try to make war and shall make war against them and shall overcome them. So the devil is going to think he won because finally he came and he made war against them and he overcome them and kill them. Listen to this very carefully. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So their dead body will be lying around in the street. And people will be, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, three and a half days, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So they're going to be like, we're not even going to bury them. Because they're so happy now that finally these men that was here tormenting us, telling us about this God and bringing plagues upon us and doing all kinds of things. Finally, we have, we, they're dead. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice, mighty God, over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So finally, they are dead. Finally, they, they, they will be rejoicing and happy that the man who was there preaching Jesus, preaching God and telling them about eternal life and, re and repentance and how they need to turn from their sins. These men are dead. So they are rejoicing over them. 
But after three days and a half, the spirit of life, somebody need to worship God on that note. The spirit of life from God, it entered into them. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that the Bible says shall also quicken our mortal bodies. The Bible says that on three and a half days later, they, that spirit of life from God will enter into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So now their rejoicing ceased because all of a sudden, they thought it's just like how Jesus walked the earth and Jesus spoke and Jesus prophesied to us and Jesus, you know, he, he, he healed the sick and he raised the dead and he fed the multitude and he loved people and he did everything. And many didn't believe him. And then he was crucified and many rejoiced. But then three days later, he raised, he rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, that's when a lot of them said, Ooh, he must have been the truth. The really he is indeed the son of God. Many believed on him. Then many came and on and, and, and the day of Pentecost, they, they came and they repented. And they, they, the Bible says they were added to the church over 3,000 that day. And daily God began to add to the church daily such as are to be saved even up until today we the church is being added to mighty God but these men again it's going to happen because you see the Bible tells us that as we get closer and closer to that time in the last days perilous times shall come perilous time because people are just going to live however they want they want to do whatever they want but then they're going to find that when they start to hear that their lifestyle is wrong they need to repent then they want to kill and destroy those that will speak the truth and these men will be, will be killed by the dragging himself by Satan from the bottomless pit. But the Bible says after three days and, uh, and a half, the spirit of the Lord of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. All of a sudden they were, they were fearful. They couldn't believe their eyes. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither, come up hither. So they hear this voice from heaven calling these men to come up. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld, beheld them. So it wasn't a secret thing. The enemy had them on parade for three and a half days. But when God raised them up, mighty God of Daniel, let me tell you something. Let me just interject to some of you who are believers who are struggling in your walk with the Lord. Sometimes you don't understand that it's because the enemy have you on parade. The enemy is trying to parade you and to show you up as if, you know, your God is not strong. But let me tell you something. God is going to march in and he's going to take over your situation. He's going to raise you up again. He's He's gonna set you back on your feet again and you in before your enemies just like the Bible says that before your enemies he will he will set a table before them amen he will set a table before your enemies God when the devil thinks he is gonna publicly embarrass you as a child of God God is gonna publicly exalt you before your enemies somebody need to worship God on that note mighty God of Daniel we worship you today because we know our God is faithful you know it says a hundred one thousand two hundred and sixty days there is a set time mighty God there is a set time for them before they were killed and a, a set time for them to be on parade by the enemy for three and a half days but there is a set time for God that is gonna come and he's gonna exalt them before their enemies he's going to exalt you before your enemies so that they will be made ashamed in the name of Jesus mighty God the time mighty God the prosperous has come says the Lord and so the same hour Mighty God, there, there was there a great earthquake in the same hour that they were taken up into the heavens. There was a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell. And the earthquake was, and the earthquake were slain of men, seven, over seven thousand, about seven thousand men died in that earthquake. And the remnant were affrighted. All of a sudden, those that left that didn't die, they were frightened. They were shocked out of their minds. And the Bible says, and they gave glory to God. Imagine the measure that God had to take in order for them to turn to him and give him glory. 
It had to take these men preaching for 1,220 years. Then it had to take them being killed and paraded for three and a half days. Then it had to take them being raised up before their very eyes and taken up to heaven. Earthquakes and, and shaking up of the earth and the city falling down and, and, and 7,000 dead before somebody say who and turn to God. What will it take for God to cause you to turn to him? What will it take for you to decide to repent of your sins and turn to Jesus just now? What will it take? What will it take for you to decide that enough is enough? I have labored long and hard in sin. Now I am coming home. Hallelujah. What will it take? Glory be to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. And so, let me continue reading. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every time I sit here, guys, these are things I never even thought about. But as I'm sitting here, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me on this. Because, you know, I know that God knows each and every one of us. He knows you. He knows me. And he knows everything that's going on in your life and in your heart. What will it take is the question for you today. The same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake were, and the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God the, the to the God of heaven. And it says here the second woe is past. We've been talking about the the the, the seven woes, uh, um, you know, the seven trumpets, and then after the 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 the, 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 the they tell you that six of the trumpets were were sounded, and then there are three more or the seven were sounded uh hold on the the seven trumpet was sounded and and then there is like these woes that's gonna happen so one woe was passed two was this is the second one this is the second one when the when 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 god is gonna send his witness that shows men that listen here i did send you the law you didn't listen to me. I did send you the prophets. You didn't listen to me. And so now I'm sending back them again to come back and minister to you again. And people will still not listen. But thank God that there is a remnant. Thank you, Jesus, that there is yet a remnant. The Bible says, and the remnant were affrighted. The remnant were affrighted. I thank God that he always have a remnant. You see, God is not in the business of destroying humanity. And he says, I wish above all that none would perish. He wants us to come to repentance. I do not have any glory in them that die, says the Lord. I find no pleasure in it. Turn yourselves and live. He is looking for the remnant. Mighty God, those that will finally begin to fear the Lord, those that will finally say, God, I see it now, you are real. Those that will finally say, God, you are God and there is none other beside you. And so the remnant were frightened and gave glory to God, the God of heaven, not just a God out there. Because a lot of people serving other gods and calling it gods. They're serving their money. They're serving wood, stick, stone, gold, silver. They're serving everything else and calling it God. But when the remnant was affrighted, the Bible says that they gave glory to the God of heaven. Amen. So we need to look up to that one God of heaven. And we need to give glory to him. So the second woe is past and behold, the third woe comes and it's coming quickly. It says it comes quickly. So people think that, you know, all this, you know, this gibberish that we talk, uh, you know, about Jesus is coming and God is coming and whoa, whoa, whoa. It is coming and the Bible says it's coming quickly because you know why it's quickly? Because God doesn't go by your, your time clock. He does not go by your time clock. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. And so we look at it because we think that when we live to a to hundred or we live to 50 or 80 or 90, my God, we have lived so long, some of us. But yet for God, that's just a fraction of time. You understand? So he says, I'm coming quickly. He's not going by your time clock. You need to get ready because you don't know in an hour when you think not, the son of man will come. And so it says, and the seventh angel sounded, glory be to God, mighty God. The, seventh, the third war is tied to the sounding of the seventh angel. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven. 
saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God. See, when the seventh angel sound and when that seventh war begins, it's because God, as we read yesterday, is finishing everything. No more delay, no more time, no more leaving you, you know, room for repentance. No more delay in the plan of God when the seventh angel sound. Glory be to God. Some of us think we can wait on until the 11th hour of the, you know, 1159, before we will turn our heart to Jesus. But you don't know the day nor the hour. Be you also ready for in an hour when you think not the Son of Man shall come and the seventh angel will sound. And there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God. You see, when the seventh angel sound, we know that Satan has no more, no more, no more place in this earth. Satan will be subject and subject and bound for eternity when the seventh angel sound. Because the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And you shall and he shall reign forever and ever. Mighty God of Daniel. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God. On their seats, they fell upon their faces and they worshipped God. Now we see worshipping continuing in heaven. We saw, was it yesterday, where there was a silent period of about half an hour. But that's long enough. Hello, Boshata. That's enough time. That's long enough to not worship God. That's long enough. Mighty God, some of us been living forever in our sins. From the day we come out of the womb, we've been living in sin and we won't repent. It's long enough. It's long enough that you're living your life any and anyhow and you're not repenting and turning to God. It's long enough. In heaven, half an hour was way too long. And so we see here that the, the 24 elders fell down again before God and they begin to worship. How long will you continue in sin? How long will you live in jeopardy every hour? How long will you continue and ignore the Christ of God? How long? Mighty God, it's long enough. But I think it was David that says that a day in your courts, oh God, is better than a thousand elsewhere. We have spent so much time in sin and we seem to want to continue in sin. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. We must repent now and we must turn to the living God. It's long enough. It's long enough. Uh, and saying, we give thee thanks. So when they fell down, they says, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned mighty God and so we see that Jesus Christ will stand as the reigning king that we are seeing him revealed as in this book of revelation mighty God the nations were angry mighty God and they and thy wrath is come mighty God and the time of the dead that they should be judged listen here guys the nations think they are angry you don't want to see the anger of God because the nations were angry, but the time has come, says the word of God, that thy wrath, O God, is come. Thy wrath is come and the time of the dead. Those dead, when we say dead, is not just dead in the physical, dead in sin. Dead in sin, never repented, never come alive, was never quickened in Christ. Dead in sin, but their time will come. The Bible says the time has come for them. For of the time of the dead. And they should be what? Judged. They should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants. So listen. The judgment is coming to those that are dead in trespasses and sins. Those that never repented. Those that are serving the living God. Were servants of the living God. And the prophet shall receive rewards. Mighty God, and to the saints, those of us, some of us, we are not even noticed in this world. Mighty God, yet we are saints of the living God because our hearts have been converted. We've been washed. We've been made new by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah.
hallelujah to God. And so there is a reward for you as well. And them that fear thy name. So listen to this. Them that fear thy name. Remember earlier on we read that after all this thing that the prophets preached, they wouldn't repent. But when they realized what was going, the Bible says the remnant feared Listen, they were factored into the rewards as well because they feared God in that point and unto them that feared thy name, small and great. Whether you are high in status in society or you are low status in society, you're, once you fear the name of God, reverence his holy name, recognize him as the true and the only wise God. Then the Bible says you will be factored in the reward, not the judgment. Mighty God, he says here, let me read it again, guys. This is so deep in Revelations 11, 20 and verse 18. The nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead and they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So those who want to destroy the earth with sinful deeds, know this, that God is going to bring you into judgment. Mighty God, you think you can mess up this earth with all your evils and all your filth and do whatever you want. And you destroy God's perfect creation, which he created in the book of Genesis. And he says, when he looked, God turned around and looked and says, and when he, God looked at it, God says, it was good. God says it was good. He made it perfect. And yet we are living any and anyhow and destroying it. And we don't expect to come into judgment. The Bible says you will come up to judgment because God says I'm going to destroy them that destroyed the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament or covenant, right? So the temple of God was open in heaven. You know, we have on earth, they, they create the temple. There was the, 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 the temple um, that, for, that the Israelites had in the, in, the, in the coming out of Egypt, right? And so they have the temple. They had the covenant, the ark of the covenant within the temple. Now in heaven, heaven is, 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 um, is a ref reflect what is on earth. As Jesus said, when you pray, say, Lord, let your will be done in heaven as it is in, in earth, rather as it is in heaven. So when God gives a plan and say, make me a tabernacle and make it like this and like that and like that, we think it's just God telling us to do it for the earth. God is telling you, make earth look what like heaven. I want, I have given you earth and I need earth to be a reflection of heaven. In heaven, here is this tabernacle and there is this temple and I want to see this reflected on the earth. And so when it says, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, guys, we think the temple down here is destroyed. And so that destroyed the whole plan of God. We may not have kept up our end of the bargain up here, but God has his end already intact up here, up in heaven. And so the temple of God is open up in the heavens. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his, of his testament or the ark of the covenant. God does not forget covenant. God has made covenant with Abraham. God made covenant with his people. And God says, I am going to save you. I'm going to redeem you. He sent for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came. We killed him, guys. We murdered him, guys. We crucified him, guys. And even today, people are still crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ afresh. But God does not forget covenant. Heaven is still holding up its end of the bargain. Somebody need to praise the Lord. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. These are reflections of all of what we see happen in, in, in Egypt when God was bringing, when he was doing what he was doing to, to convince that old devil, that old Pharaoh, let my people go. Heaven is still rolling with thunder. Heaven is still striking lightning against that devil. Heaven is still hailing down judgment against that devil. Because God is still saying, let my people go. 
You understand? He is holding up his end of the bargain. Heaven will never stop until your soul is redeemed. Hallelujah. And if you choose to reject him and to join force with hell, then you too shall be destroyed. But too bad for you. You cannot blame God because God, as you see in this book, he's doing everything that he needs to do. If he needs to send torment, he will send it just to save your soul. If he needs to, to reprimand you, if he needs to chastise you, if he needs to bless you. He does what he needs to do. But if at the end of the day you choose not to repent, don't get jealous because the remnant choose to fear God. So you want to make sure that you join yourself with the remnant. Those that will say, I will follow Jesus everywhere, anywhere. I will follow on. Hallelujah to God. I will keep on going on with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I love the word of God. Let me tell you guys, I get fire in my bones when I begin to read this word. Hallelujah to God. Because I see the plan of God unfolding and I see that my soul is pertinent and important to him. And I see that heaven is reflection, is, re is, is keeping up its end of the bargain. And it doesn't matter how much we destroy down here. Heaven is intact and he is going to find a way. To bring my soul to glory. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now that was the end of chapter 11. And I said that tomorrow I am I'm going to be leaving off at chapter 11. I'm doing one chapter at a time guys. Because this there's so much in these, in these chapters. And I know you've probably heard Revelation preached and teached and talked about. And I'm, I, I, I took it upon myself to go through the Bible. I had no idea what I was going to say, do what. But I know that I felt in my spirit that this is what God wants me to do. And every time I sit here I feel that the Lord is speaking to somebody individually he's speaking to us collectively and he's speaking to me personally mighty God and I want to grow in grace I want to continue with him let me tell you something when you get to heaven you won't search very far you will find me there I promise you you will find me there because I will not let go of this truth I will not let go of this thing because God has given me this and I tell you I know that if I hold out and if I hold on by my by faith, all things will work together for my good. God is bringing me into his glory. Will you join with me? Will you make, make sure that you, you run the race with patience? That you don't give up on God? That you don't let nobody steal your crown? That you get radical about your faith? That you get radical about your, your walk with the Lord? That you make it a personal endeavor to get close to God? Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Too many of us trying to align ourselves with the things of the world. We are aligning ourselves with the things of the world which will not profit us anything because end of the day the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God. Whose kingdom do you want to be a part of? Mighty God of Daniel. Hallelujah. Whose kingdom do you want to be a part of? I say come up under the banner of Jesus Christ. Come up under the kingdom and authority and dominion of Jesus Christ. And let him lead you. Let him be your head. Mighty God of Daniel. I bless you guys in the name of Jesus. This is the word that the Lord has given us for today. Father, I thank you so much for this word, Lord. I thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I see you in your glory, in your dominion, O oh God. And I worship you, O oh God. You are worthy to receive glory and honor and dominion and power and praise. You are worthy, O oh God. I bow before you and I humble myself before you. I will run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. You started it, God. You will finish it, God. Nobody will be able to rob me of this eternal life. Nobody will be able to take my crown. I press into you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will encourage your people as you put these words in my mouth, God, that they, God, they will hear the word of the Lord and they will hold on to their faith and they will press into God and that they will not let anyone rob them, oh God, or move them out of the way. I bless your people today, Lord. Continue to undergird those who are struggling in their faith, oh God. Undergird them, oh God. Infuse them with the life of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Infuse them God he satya monaco infuse them God with the power of the Holy Ghost that they
they will continue to run with patience this race that you have set before us, God. We look to you, our King, and we trust in you, O God, who is able to save and to deliver. We thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you guys. Ah, uh -huh. glory to God. God bless you guys. I love you. I just pray that you will continue in the faith. Whatever you do, don't give up. I'm begging. I'm begging. Just like these, these, um, these, um, the, 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 the witnesses that God says he's going to send. They're going to be pleading and begging. And the Bible says in sackcloth and ashes. You know, that's a, that's a, that's like mourning. Sackcloth. When, when people would put on sackcloth and ashes on their head, they're mourning. It's like they're, they're, they're pleading. They're mourning. You understand? They're going to come in, in such a way. They're not coming like some, like how we see preachers today on their high horse, you know, with their nice fancy suit and, 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 and their big fancy cars and their fancy houses and talking about money, money, send me this. They will be coming mourning for the nations and saying, please repent, turn to Jesus before it's too late. We only have 120 and two, one, 1,260 days to tell you this news. Repent, receive it now, mighty God. Why must we wait? Imagine in those days when that shall be and they will only have that time frame and people will still reject. But the remnant will be saved, yes? But what about you today? You don't know what, about what hour. You don't know if tomorrow you will still be alive and be able. In the grave, there is no repentance in the grave. There is no repentance in the grave. If you die tomorrow, you will never again be able to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. As a matter of fact, if you fall in a coma, you may never be able to say that. You could live forever and still the brain is gone. The mind is not there. What do you do then? Repent. Accept Jesus while you can. That's all I'm going to say. Accept him now. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm ending. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Thank you, Jesus.